Good morning. It is my last day wolfing on this farm in the countryside of Fukuchiyama, Japan. I've been here for three weeks and I finally got around to filming a, uh, a day in the life video. So stick around and check out what an average day looks like on this organic vegetable farm in Japan. All right, so to start my day every morning, I come up to this wonderful hillside. So the farm is located down there and there's a little road that comes up here. We're actually the last farm on the hillside. And so the only thing behind us is this beautiful little lake and this mountain area. And every morning I've been coming up here, usually six o'clock, maybe a little bit after. And I've been trying to do some nature bathing, which is basically just like meditation, but you're just trying to like listen to the sounds of nature and I found it's been a really good way to start my day. I've been trying to kick the habit of going on my phone right away, and uh, I figure this is the best place to start. I have a beautiful surrounding and just wonderful scenery, and so, yeah, it's just a great way to start the day, clear my head before I have to get ready to work. All right, so the first activity of the day is feeding the goats. So this is Toka. And this is boss and uh feeding them is pretty easy they don't actually they eat all day because they basically keep this rice paddy clean from grass but you basically just throw some hay and some nutrition powder in here and then when they're eating you brush them with this brush to just check on their fur see how they're doing and it's kind of just like a daily health check to uh make sure they're all nice and healthy but they're super sweet and uh yeah it's a fun way to start the day. Okay, so it's just after nine o'clock and the work day is about to start. Today, we're starting off the day by working on the togarashi peppers, which is a, a type of pepper that Matsuo-san grows as his main source of summer income right now. And we've kind of been battling some disease so we might be pruning them or we might be fertilizing them. It kind of depends on what the plants need right now. But that will probably make up the first hour of the workday and then we'll see what comes after that. All right, Grizz, what are we up to right now? Oh, hey, didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are uh, adding fertilizer to the plants here at the Togarashi. Um, they're fighting off disease right now and uh, we're, uh, can I swear on this? If you want. Yeah. <laughs> we're uh, basically feeding them shit water. Yeah. 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 It smells disgusting, but yeah, we're basically just pouring some liquid fertilizer right, right mm. on the uh, roots of some of these small ones. And for these larger ones, there's little holes yeah. right in the middle of the plants. And we're just basically helping them fight the good fight against this disease, trying to uh, juice them up with some shit water. All right, finished the peppers. Now we're off to the taro fields, probably to fertilize them as well and maybe pick some caterpillars. All right, we're now at the taro fields. Now this activity, we're finally joined by our main man, Chris. So basically all we're doing is we have all these rows of taro and there's all this plastic covering it. And all we're doing right now is we're preparing it for fertilizing. And so we're just pulling up the uh, plastic underneath. And then eventually our host, Matsuo-san, will come back with the machine to rip up the dirt. And water. And then, yeah, and then we'll water. just, yeah, and our waters. And then uh, we'll be able to put some fertilizer down at the edge of the roots and then cover it back up. But basically all we're doing right now is lifting up plastic. So 
hopefully uh, the fun part will come after. <coughs> Lunch time. We're sweaty. Yes, sir. We're sweaty and we're dirty. Sweaty. It's time to eat. Okay, so for lunch, Matsuo-san always prepares lunch for us and then dinner we're on our own. So we just got back from the first half of the workday and he's cooking right now. So I figured I'd show some other parts of the farm and uh, show what other kind of work we've been doing. A big part of what we've been doing has been working on these tomatoes and trellising them up so that they're uh, growing right. And then obviously pulling off the extra growth points. So we basically, there's two varieties of tomatoes mixed in here. There's the large ones and the small ones, and they're all kind of like mixed in, interplanted in these two rows. And so for the large ones, it's pretty easy. We just have kind of one main shoot going up the trellis and we just kind of keep it growing along the pole and then pulling off any extra growth points. The smaller tomatoes, pretty easy. We just do two main stems and basically do the same thing. And then the other major crop over here that we've been working on a lot is the cucumbers. And so just make sure trellising the main vine upward. And then for these little side vines you can see right here, this one popping off the main stem. So we'd go one leaf, two leaf, and then pulling off the uh, extra stem. So I, of course, also have to mention one of the uh, most frequent activities that we've been doing here, and that has been cutting grass. So the area we're in, it's got a lot of slopes because it's actually a repurposed rice paddy farm used for vegetables. And so there's lots of streams running throughout the whole place and lots of hills and banks to the different fields. And because it's so wet here and it's so warm, the, the grass explodes. So there's tons of growth this time of year. So we've been cutting tons of grass with all sorts of different tools. And it's been very time consuming, but it's one of those parts of organic farming that kind of needs to get done. You need to cut back the other plants or else it will. this will literally just turn back into jungle and all of the crops would get smothered. So. That's another one of the main tasks we've been up to. Another major activity has been taking care of chestnut trees. So these are all chestnut trees. He has a couple fields here, one down here and one up here. And then he has another one that's located at a different field. And these guys are the enemy. So these beetles, they literally have like orgies and basically eat all of these young chestnut trees. A lot of these trees are pretty young and they don't start producing chestnuts that are edible until the age of five. So we just take all of these beetles and it's not very humane, but you step on them or you drown them or you put them in a bag and kill them because they will just absolutely devour these chestnut trees all this damage and because we're not using pesticides they're just everywhere so it's just uh it's a constant war but we've spent a lot of time just doing manual pest control taking all these beetles off of the chestnut trees and the last place that we've really been spending a lot of our time is in the togarashi peppers so these peppers are his main source of income and they have been a main part of the work we've been putting in. Unfortunately, since I've got here, we've been dealing with some disease. I don't know if you can see these little white dots on these leaves here, but this disease has been really detrimenting the growth of these plants. And we've spent a lot of time just doing manual removal of any diseased leaves that we find on the plants. Um, 
spent a lot of time pruning them and I learned a lot about like trellising these peppers. So the setup he has kind of has these four different prongs. Sorry, trying to point when you're looking at the camera. It's so difficult. Uh, these four different prongs where we have four main stems and then for each side stem, uh, at each node where there's pepper growth, we count that as one. And so we'd let two nodes and then we trim them. And then that allows the pepper plant to kind of fill in on the sides while still promoting growth along the main stem. Um, is a really useful technique and I definitely think I will apply it when growing my own peppers in the future. Also learning to fertilize at the tips of the roots instead of at the base of the plant. This was something I also was not aware of, but um, I, I very much trust Matsuo-san and his methods because his plants grow incredibly fast. And so it's just been a really educational experience seeing what like a real world example of organic farming for yield looks like. And I'm really excited to hopefully apply a lot of what I've learned to my own farming in the future. So what are we uh, what are we having for lunch today? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> Even I don't know yet. That already. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be delicious no matter what. Yeah. Udon ala Matsuo-san. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, dinner is done. I have 40 minutes until we start working again. I'm going to pass out. Take a siesta. Well, lunch is over and it's about to thunderstorm. Well, in spite of the bad weather, it's not actually raining too hard, so we're gonna build a new house for these guys. These were literally a week old when, they, when we first got here and now they're a month old and they've outgrown their little box. So we're going to construct a new one. Makeover home edition. Stream makeover chickens. Oh. Please bring the fire, please. Look at that. New home. <laughs> <laughs> We're stuck. It's raining. So we're at a shrine. Yeah. We're waiting to work. We're trying out Matsuo's new invention, right? Yeah, yeah. New invention. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna cut more grass. So, kind of an un or unorthodox work day yeah, today. Yeah. Weather kind of got in the way, but um, sometimes it's like that. It's a monsoon season, and you never know when a big ass thunderstorm is just going to roll in and yeah. change your schedule for the day. So, change it up. Got a couple hours, and then we'll probably eat dinner, and maybe we'll fill some shit then, but yeah. yeah. That's the end of the work day. Oh, they're totally baby sandlanders. What are you, buddy? Put him in the water. Dude, he's gonna get eaten if I put him in the water. Sure. <laughs> it's all right. Well, put him back. He's not gonna go back. Be able to go back in there. Damn. Too fast. 
All right, we're all showered and we just finished eating dinner. We just threw together some yakisoba real fast with the ingredients we have on hand. Pretty normal um, dinner that we've been throwing together quite often. Sometimes we do a little curry. Sometimes we do mid gyoza yesterday with Atsuo-san. That was very fun. And uh, the day's basically over. And one of the best parts about being at this wolfing farm is getting to sit right here after a long day of work, and just reading your book and just enjoying the sound of the, the river, the sound of the rain, the sound of the nature. It's, it's really incredible. And uh, I feel so lucky to have been here. I had an amazing time. I can't believe it's over, to be honest. It blew my mind it, how fast it went by, but I really feel like this place has allowed me to grow a lot um, just by providing the right set of variables, the amazing scenery and incredible host. It's been a, a really wonderful time. So um, I hope you enjoyed just a little glimpse into a, a day of a day in the life of what we've been up to this last couple of weeks. And thanks for watching.